Mr. James Tolkien. All right. <laughs> Slackers of the world unite. <laughs> okay. Making dreams come true, Mr. Tolkien. Nice to see you here. Okay. Well, we're gonna, we'll talk about a lot of different things now. We do want to mention there, Sunday at 2.30, I got it. Okay. Sunday at 2.30, there is going to be a Back to the Future panel. Uh, Claudia Wells, Harry Waters Jr., Mr. Tolkien's going to be there. So that's going to be Sunday. So we'll talk about some Back to the Future a little bit today. We're going to talk about a lot of other things that are going Top Gun. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Masters sure. of the Universe. There's so many different things uh, to talk about. So get your questions ready. Um, with, there's a microphone right up here so we can... Uh, come up on here, so if you have your questions, we'll, we'll bring you up here. Um, we've got a special surprise. We'll have a little trivia question a little later. The person who, and you have to raise your hand, so just don't blurt it out. If you know the answer, I know there's a lot of nerds and geeks in here who are gonna know the answer. I am one of them. Uh, but we do have, from Back to the Future 3, a nice autographed picture of Mr. Tolkien right here, so for whoever gets that uh, first, we're gonna have that as well. So keep that in mind. Um, first. I've got a question from one of the listeners of Comic Book Central. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Mr. What is this? Robert Gale. Is it, do you know? Do you know Robert Gale? Is that familiar? Bob Gale? Is that uh, Bob Gale? Yeah, right. <laughs> is that familiar to you? I know Bob Gale. I don't know Robert Gale. Uh, yeah, um, Bob Gale. He says he wants to know more about how you approached your role uh, in Prince of the City, because oh. that was a pretty pivotal role in Getting Back to the Future. I think. How did you know that? I. Talk to Mr. Robert Gale. Yeah, uh, you know, they saw me in a movie, Prince of the City, directed by Sidney Lumet. It's a, uh, it's a police story about corruption, police corruption in New York City. And it's one of my favorite movies because it was directed, it, it, it was the, the, the whole process, we had three weeks of rehearsal, and Sidney Lumet is a great director, and he... Um, the first week, we just sit around a table, and he said, no acting, just read the script and talk. Talk and listen. Talk, so we just did that simple, talk and listen. Then the second week, we, he got up, we got up with play, the scenes, and we took the scenes one, on, one at a time and worked the scenes. And the third week, we started running through the entire screenplay as if it was a, as if it was a play uh, in sequence. So after three weeks, everybody knew their job, and when we started shooting, we finished every day about 4.30, which is unheard of in movies, and, and many weeks ahead of schedule. 4.30 p.m. And, yeah, and it was one of my, <laughs> p.m., yeah, and it was one of my favorite experiences because it made you feel this is why you want to be an actor, and Sidney Lumet was a great director. Now you had already worked with him on Serpico. Serpico was my first movie. And okay. the <laughs> Let's and talk I, a little bit about Sidney Lumet. Yeah, that is. Yeah. No, thank you. What is that dynamic between the two of you, and how did he help you, especially at such an early phase of your career, yeah. how did he help you to bring out those performances? Well, <laughs> when we did Serpico, I, I don't know if you remember the scene. It's a very kind of, I use foul language, and it, it's a very kind of a powerful scene where I catch... Al Pacino in the men's room, and I make a very strong accusation toward him. And uh, Sidney Lumet really upset me personally and deeply before I did that scene. Like in and, reality, he did. Yeah, you know, in reality, and I thought I never want to work with this guy again. I never want to see him <laughs> again. He made me so upset. And we did the scene, and then we're coming to, when we're coming down in the elevator afterward. He said. Next time, it'll be something much more. And that was Prince of the City a few years later. And of course, I also did a movie with him um, uh, with, 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 with uh, Matthew Broderick and Dusty Hoffman and Sean Connery. Uh, what the heck was the name of that movie? Oh, um, uh, I, <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, Family Business. I, family Business, yeah. And he was just wonderful to work with, wonderful. That's, it's, it makes you feel, yeah, this is why I want to be an actor, to work with people like that. 
did he do something in, like intentionally, like to get that performance out of you, in, to, to take you off? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. What was? Can you tell us what he did? Or is no, it family friendly? It was just. It was. He really got to me, man. It was so personal. But he did I that to get. You. I wouldn't take that from anybody. Anybody else, I would have laid him out. But, <gasps> uh, but no. But I mean, but that's that's how it goes. That's. He but knew, then afterward, he, he knew said, he, I just did that That's too. what he wanted. He didn't say. He, didn't, he just said, next time it'll be something much more. But that's, you know, the uh, George Bernard Shaw said that the true artist will take the mother's milk and turn it into printer's ink. In other words, anything to get the result. It doesn't matter who you hurt, who you step on, but to get the result that you want. And that's what Sidney did with me in, in Serpico. <laughs> what was it about acting that, that first appealed to you? That, that when do you do you remember something being inspired by something at a young age? And yeah, I was at I was at Coe College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I saw a play called The Kane Mutiny Court Martial before it opened on Broadway, and it was directed by Charles Lawton and with Henry Fonda, and I watched this play. I just couldn't believe how wonderful it was to see these actors working. And that's when I said, I want to do this. I want to become an actor. And, um, and I, that was in about 1953 or something like that. And then I transferred to the University of Iowa where I majored in theater. And then after six years of college, I just got on a Greyhound bus one day out of Iowa City. I had $75 in my pocket and I went to New York to be an actor. And if I knew what I was getting into, I don't know if I would have had the courage. But I got off that bus, and I remember the I stayed the first two nights at the YMCA, and my money went out right away. And I took any, after six years of college, I'm working as a bus boy. And I mean, but I came to New York to study. I wanted to study with the great teachers. So I studied with Stella Adler to begin with. And Stella was a great teacher of the method. So I studied with her for one year, and after a year she gave me a scholarship, and I studied two more years with her, and I didn't look for any work. So after three years studying with Stella, I, I auditioned for a play off Broadway, and I was cast the first play I ever auditioned for, and it was a success off Broadway, and that's what got me started, and some of the agents saw me and producers, and, and then I just started going from one job to another, you know, not necessarily big jobs, and working at that time off Broadway for forty-five dollars a week or whatever, and then I remember when I when I did a national tour, I was making one hundred and twenty-five dollars a week, and then in nineteen sixty, yeah, that was sixty-one, and then in sixty-five, I was doing uh, Wait Until Dark on Broadway with Lee Remick, and I was playing the killer in that, the psychotic killer, and I was making five hundred dollars a week then, and it just it just goes, you know, that's how it was, and it's it's just been great. I mean. It's, I feel so fortunate to have survived and to be here right now and to be able to talk about it, you know? Well, in those early days, what kept you going? Like the lean and mean years, like what, what was it that kept you going that said, this is it, I'm doing this? It, it was just my, it was my personal purpose, it was my purpose. I said, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be an actor on whatever level, I don't care what level, I'm here in New York, I'm gonna be an actor. and. I was determined to just to make it <laughs> on Broadway and and movies and TV and whatever and um, as I say I feel so lucky because I'm now here I'm 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 I'm, I'm um, what do you call it when you no longer do something I'm retired. You're retired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Back to the and Future I'm, fans will let you retire. No, I mean, it just no, I'm keeps retired. I'm back. retired. I, I, although I did, I'll do something every now and then. I did a movie called uh, Bone Tomahawk with uh, Kurt Russell that'll be out. I think it's going to be out soon. Yeah, Sean Young's and in that too, right? I don't know. I think I, Kurt I, Russell and Sean. Okay, so your scenes were with Kurt? No, no, no. And I, it was such a small part. I said, what do you, you, I live in Lake Placid, New York. I said, why do you want to bring me to, from Lake Placid, New York? You got to fly me out first class. You got to pay me, pretty everything. No, we want you. We want you. You've been in some of my favorite movies. So I went and did it. And it's a small part. And I'm glad I did it because it was just a very nice experience. But I'm retired now. I'm living in Lake Placid, New York. It's a beautiful place. I have just about I ever whatever I ever really wanted. I, um, I feel 
very lucky. I've survived the business. I've survived <laughs> everything, good and bad, you know. But um, well, we have the answer to that question. I mean, we, we know why they brought you out. Because oh, you're James Tolkien. That's well, why. that's that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a question from the eye. Who's got a question they want to? Yeah, come on, right up to the mic here. Yeah, Mary, these have to be good questions, or he's going to think you're a slacker. We do not <laughs> check, check, to. check, check. Okay. <laughs> when you were working on Nero Wolf, every week you'd play a different character. Correct. Is it easier to play a different character using the same group of actors week after week, or would it have been easier for you if they were different actors every time? Okay, I'm going to ask you to just repeat the last part of that question again and speak into the mic. Sorry, I've got a slight cold. So okay. <laughs> uh, when you were working on Nero Wolf. And every, Nero Wolf, yeah. yeah. Every week you played a different character. I played a different character every episode. As an actor, would it have been easier for you to do that with a different group of actors every week? Yeah. Or how, how, how did no, that work? No, I must, the challenges I must tell you, you ran into? as an actor... What could be better than to play a different character in every episode? That's the most fun, to play the same character. You know, I did a, a series called Cobra with Michael Dudikoff, and, and I, got, I got so bored with doing that same character. And, and uh, it seemed like that every week they would re, it would be a rewrite of the scene before, and that, made, that got so tiring. But to, to work, first of all, Nero Wolf, we had very good scripts. Timothy Hutton is a, is, a, is a very good director, very good actor, and a great friend of mine. So I was really very pleased to do Nero Wolf and play a different character every single week. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Good Thank question. you. Good question. We have another one? Another question right over here? Yep. Hi. Hi. Speak I into that mic, yeah, please. Yeah, you put it right into the microphone. Yeah, you gotta get out right on yeah. these things. I have two questions. What? I have two, two questions. questions. Yeah. My first question: um, What was it like when they asked you to be in Back to the Future? What was it like when I was asked to be yeah, in Back to you, the Future? Well, was, well, you'd mentioned Bob Gale had seen you in Prince of the City. Yeah, they, so how yeah, did that they, process come about then? He, he, look, I was doing a play on Broadway with Lee with. Um, with a lot of great actors, David Mamet played called Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. And I got a call from this guy, Bob Gale. Bob Gale. I had never heard of him, and he asked me to do this part. And I always said, I'm never going to Hollywood until somebody sends for me. And it seems like <laughs> this was the chance to go to Hollywood, at being sent for. So I went out um, and to do this movie, and nobody thought it was anything very special at that time. Even when we were filming it and finished, Nobody really thought it was that special. And of course, when it opened, it was, it was like all the planets were aligned. Everything was just perfect. The second question is, what are the requirements to be a slacker? <laughs> the requirements to be a slacker. To be a slacker? Oh, I know that you're not a slacker. But um, the, 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 there are no requirements. It's something inborn. <laughs> and you, you know, you, when you see a slacker, you know it. <laughs> you got to call him on it. You got to call you. a slacker. What's your name? Slacker. Eric. Eric, you're a slacker, Eric. <laughs> Although I know you're not. Thank you. Thank you. How many times do you get that? Look, I did it too today. How many times do you get somebody just wanting you to get in their face and call them a slacker? Oh, they, and they, you do it, which is awesome. Often, often, often. They, they you know, just call, call me a slacker. That's all, you know. Because <laughs> you're the nicest guy. Like, you don't well, typically, you wouldn't typically do that to somebody. No, unless they deserved it, of course. Well, yeah. <laughs> I deserve it. I'm, I'm a slacker, no, no, too. No. We were talking about, yeah, you mentioned, because uh, talk about that meeting with Bob Gale then, because they, they brought you in, they saw you in that movie. There was no what did meeting. He see for you? There was no meeting whatsoever. Just they, cast. They cast me oh. just from having seen me in the movie Prince of the City, and no, no other actor was considered. So that, that's kind of an honor, you know. What did, they, what did Bob Gale and Bob Zemeckis tell you that they wanted from your performance, that they saw in that movie, and here's what we want you to channel for Strickland? <laughs> First of all, they never told me they, they, they saw the movie or why they, I found that out much later. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, they, you know, they don't, it's different, different directors work differently. As I, Sidney Lumet works in a very personal way to get things out of you. Um, but but um, uh, Robert Zemeckis is a little more interested in all the technical aspects, 
and he just um, he hires the actor and he trusts them and he lets the actor do what he does. Do you, you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah I think and so, it's yeah. well, you kind of just kind of well, and you, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, as the questions go through. But sure. you actually even shot it twice, uh, as we'll go through. We mentioned Strickland, uh, Mr. Strickland. I got a trivia question, so put your thinking caps on here. Who and no cheating, because I think I think you know this. <laughs> and you have to raise your hand. I'll call on you. Come up. Don't yell it out. Does anybody know Mr. Strickland's first name? a signed picture if you get his first name. You've seen the movie, it's not in the movie. You've read the novel, it's incorrect in the novel. I didn't know what his name was. <laughs> you know. Anybody know it? Then I'll just, I'll gauge the, the best question of the day. Did we, I think we stumped them here. That is such a hard question. Slackers, oh. they're slackers, that's what we got here. Okay, it's, it's actually Stanford. Stanford. Stanford Strickland. Stanford yeah. Strickland. This oh, comes what a from wimp. Bob Gale. He says, George Guy wrote the novel. It's Gerald in the novel, uh, but he wrote that novel without checking with Bob Gale. So he just gave him a name. So he and then in part two, it's SS on your nameplate. So the but he the, when they made the video game, they asked him and he just came up with Stanford. And he said the, the middle name he suggested was Stephen. Uh -huh. So your name is Stanford Stephen Strickland. Okay. <laughs> and the SS, of course, he said, was because of the Gestapo, because he just really, that was your that's character. Just, okay, so. that's very interesting. All right, yeah. so we'll go with, like, the, the coolest question, and we'll gauge that, and we'll, and we'll get okay. that photo out to you. Uh, another question. I stumped the, uh, stumped the band. Another question right over here. Yep. And right into the mic. Hello. Uh, kind of going back to doing multiple parts in a single series, like with Nero Wolf. On the spotlight listing for this panel, it mentions that you are often cast as a strict, overbearing, bald-headed authority figure. What are your thoughts on being typecast like that? Is it, is it a good thing, a bad thing, an, an annoying thing? You know, I uh, hate that, by the way. That's your Wikipedia entry. And as one of the follically challenged, I, I take offense to this, too. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, when I was studying with uh, Stella Adler, she knew that I was a character actor and playing a variety of roles good, bad, comic, serious. That's what I did in the theater. But she said for the business, for movies or TV, get a character and, and, and harden that character. And that's kind of what I did, um, playing this kind of, a, I guess, hard-nosed character. So that I chose to do that okay. for the business. And I, it's, it's more interesting than playing bartenders or cops, you know? <laughs> Well, we thank you for it very much. Okay. I just, I, I'm always like, they say bald. Like, why? You can't control that. That's why <laughs> it's actually in your Wikipedia entry. It's the first thing. Like, what does that have to well, do with it? Well, they could have a hairpiece. I well, that's true too. But look, I, I take offense to this, you know. Yeah. All right, another question. All right here. Yep. Mr. Tolkien, thank you for coming to Cincinnati. Thank you. Uh, I actually fly rubber dog stuff out of Hong Kong for a living <laughs> and all around the world enjoy it. Uh, it was one of my favorite lines that you did in Top Gun, uh, but I'm curious what your favorite all-time career favorite line, if you have one, is. My all-time favorite career favorite line? Well, you know, in Top Gun, um, I have the line, son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. When we, were, when we were filming at Miramar, I said, I want to speak to some of the squadron commanders. And I said, when the, I, I met with one of the squadron commanders. And I said, you know, when these guys screw up, how do you talk to them? And he said, here's what happened last week. I said, son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. You're going to fly yourself right into a box. So I went to the, the director and the writer. I said, OK, I want to put this line in. And they, they let me put it just the first part. They wouldn't let me say, fly yourself right into a box. That's one of my favorite lines. And that was kind of my contribution above and beyond the given. I, I put that line in the movie. And there's a couple other things that, you know, there's a, some, there's a, there's a moment toward the end where they say um, something about time. I said, and, and the line was just, you have two minutes. Or you, and I said, bullshit. 
you don't, you don't have 10 minutes, we have two minutes. And I put that in the picture. So that was fun, and I, you know, that was me improvising. Probably the most memorable parts of the movie, I would think, too, so you bring it in. Great question. Great question. So, so that brings up, I guess, one more question I wasn't expecting, is what's been your favorite movie that you've been in in your career? One of my favorite movies? I, I think Prince of the City, for all the reasons that I described earlier, because it was such a process working with a great director and you really felt this is why I want to do this. Thank you Thank very you. much. When we talk about Top Gun, um, you talk about shooting on the ship itself, the Enterprise, yeah. and because and, obviously Tom Cruise it, is Tom Cruise at that point. I mean, it, you know, he launched even bigger after that. But yeah, that, he wasn't he a was, big star then, but he was yeah. well-known, but not a big star, yeah. How, what were the challenges of shooting that and then trying to get, like, real performances out of everybody and, and so they're not watching a movie as you're shooting? Well, as I must first of all, th that's the only movie I've ever worked on where everybody thought, all right, this is going to be a success. Everybody felt it was going to really be a success right from the beginning. And all the guys who were the pilots and all that, they stay up all night partying and having a good time. But Tom Cruise was just all business. He just came to work and he, uh, he, he did his job and no monkey business. And I had a lot of respect for him. I still have a lot of respect for Tom Cruise. What does he bring out of other actors? How does it, does, obviously it raises their game, but how, how does it raise their game? No, anytime you're working with a special actor, you, you have to be at your best, so you feel that this, you, this, this actor, this special actor deserves the best that you can offer, so you try to, you try to bring that out in yourself. And, and that's the research you did too, and talking, you know, to these oh, officers that, yeah, and all these different things. Sure. Yeah, that's amazing you, yeah, that you yeah. can bring that in too. Got another yep. question, in the audience. Yeah, right over here. Uh, first of all, I'm one of the schmucks that asked you to call me a slacker today when we took the photo together. So I'd like to apologize for just being one what, of those. Your, wait, no apologies. What, what's your I, name? Uh, Vince. We took the. Your name the, is what? Vince. Vince. Yes. Vince, you're a slacker, yeah, Vince. That's the second time. So I got two for the price of one. That's okay. awesome. Um, as a prolific <laughs> stage actor and also in, in, in you're speaking with great passion about your, your training uh, yeah. for stage when you went yeah. to New York. And uh, I've done, I, I'm, as a community theater actor, I, I know some of the reward that you get from being on the stage personally mm -hmm. and the interaction with the audience. So what, what kind of personal reward... Uh, as opposed to that in, in film acting, it, do, you, do you get the same level in a different way, or, is, or, or totally how would you different. compare the two? It's totally different. The, uh, you're at the mercy of the director and many other things, and the greatest reward you have in doing movies is getting paid. <laughs> did, did you find it daunting moving from one to the next, or did you seem to fall into it, as I'm guessing you probably did? From one movie to from, the next? From, from stage acting to film acting. Uh, it's a it's a different approach. You um, it's a different medium. In the theater, you have to fill the stage, and in the theater, you have weeks of rehearsal. And once you start performing, you feel like you can control the audience. And in many cases, if it's a good play or a good role, you feel like you have the audience right in the palm of your hand. But in movies, you don't know. All oh, it's just a camera and a bunch of people around, and you're shooting, and you don't know what it's going to be. It's like go and slip on a banana peel and see what happens. And sometimes it's very good, and sometimes you're a little disappointed. Well, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to speak to you today. Thank, thank you. you so much. So on a movie set, it's basically the world is smaller because you're, everything's sort of self-contained, whereas in the theater, like you said, you've got to project to the back. You've got to hit the back of the room. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's, 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 you, you, need, you need a little more volume, a little more size... When in, in the theater, you have to, you just have to be a little bigger, you know? And in, very often in film, it's like, you just kind of talk like this and then, you know, it's kind of real and sometimes it's real, sometimes it isn't. You hope it's real, <laughs> but if, if, it, if, the, if the writing is good, that really helps. You talk about Sidney Lumet. So yeah. when you're coming in from all the, you, do, you mentioned that you did a lot of theater yeah. coming into that. Yeah. So was that something, how, how did he help you with that well, aspect of it? Of, it of the, oops, it's not theater it, right now. No, well, Sidney Lumet is, he comes from the theater, so he totally understands <laughs> the actors in New York. 
And uh, it, it's with him. It's um, he just deals with you in a different way. It, it's he makes it easy. Yeah. And, and again, early. I mean, it's huge names early in your career, and we're talking Al Pacino. Yeah. Um, and you got to work with Al Pacino a couple times. Was it author, author, as well? Yeah. And, and I did a it. play with him. Um, uh, a brick play in the jungle of cities. We did that at the uh, Circle in the Square. And yeah, I, and, I, I, and I recently worked on, uh, when Al did Phil Spector, um, I played the part of the judge in that. Again, it wasn't a big part, but I was very happy to be part of that. Al is a great actor, and um, he's been around about as long as I have. <laughs> when we think about Al Pacino, we think intensity. Yeah. When we think about James Tolkien, we think intensity. Yeah. So what is it like when the two of you get together? Is it well, intense? It, <laughs> well, it depends on the material. You know, we can both be intense if, that's what re, if that is what is required. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes that's not required. Sometimes you need something quite different. Sometimes you have to be very simple and loving or whatever. It depends. You have to do whatever the script dictates. You can't do what you want. Some actors think they can do anything they want, just be themselves. I don't, that's not acting to me. Well, and that comes from the method, too, you talked about yeah. uh, with Strasberg yeah. and yeah. Um, uh, Stella Adler, yeah. too. So that's some of the method that's coming in as well, too. Another yeah. question? Anybody out here? Because I know, oh, right here? Yep. Yeah. That's why we're here. Uh, <clears throat> I imagine most of us here who, who know a lot about the minutia of Back to the Future know about the recasting of Marty McFly. From did Eric you, Stoltz to Marty yes, McFly. Did, did you personally have any time with Eric Stoltz? I did, yes. And, and was, was it different for you between working with Eric as Marty and ver working with Michael as Marty? Well, of course it was different. But, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we were seven weeks into shooting mm -hmm. And the very day that um, that the um, that this event took place, Eric is in, in the makeup room and he says, "Well, they can't fire me now." And that day he was fired. And the yeah. reason he was fired, he's a very good actor, but they they felt in watching the rushes, the daily rushes, they felt that you were more interested in all the characters around McFly rather than McFly himself. And that's why they got rid of Eric Stoltz, shut down production, and waited for Michael J. Fox. And that move was so brave because if that didn't work, you would never hear Robert Zemeckis. <laughs> but it was like just perfection. They yeah, did the right thing. They were very, all in on this. Very gutsy thing to do. They were all in on this movie too because they were coming out of working with Spielberg yeah. Some some high profile failures at yeah. the box office, and so yeah, that was if this thing didn't hit, that could have been uh, that could have been disastrous. Did you change your perform? Did did you use that time to kind of tweak your performance at all? No, the writing they rewrote everything, so, but, so it's just same character but new words. Okay, oh, okay. Was Slacker in the original one? With I think so. I don't hardly remember. You didn't come sure up with that was, though, right? That was Ga no, no, no. no. <laughs> very <laughs> specifically, Bob Gale. Yeah. Okay, very Thank good. you very Thank much. You. Yep, right here, Spider-Man shirt. Hi. Hello. My cousin is recently becoming a popular actor, and he's doing two theater productions this year. He's playing Prince Eric and also in Rent. What advice would you give to young actors starting in the theater? What advice would I give young actors who, who are serious about being... The profession? In the theater. Yeah. In the theater. First of all, uh, you don't know what you're getting into with it. And my <laughs> advice to any actor who would be actor, I say, if there's anything else in life that you could be happy doing, do it. <laughs> because you, the, you, what you have to go through as an actor, the, uh, the, the, oh, the, the rejection, the uh, doubts you have, is very, very challenging. And um, a lot of people fall by the wayside, I can tell you. A lot of people I know of just, they just fall by the wayside. Okay. Some people give it 10 years, 15 years. I say, for me, I, I it, it's, no, I, I said, no, I'm gonna be an actor, that's it. One, no, no time frame. <laughs> All right. 
Thank you. Thank you. We talk about, uh, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future, especially this weekend. We've got uh, all of you here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jumping ahead to, to part two, were you disappointed at all that you didn't get a 2015 version of Strickland? We got a 2015 version of Strickland right now, which is awesome. No. And he's calling us slackers. No, it's very cool. No. But you no, got, I, you got I, the 1985 with the, the shotgun no, Strickland. I, I, no, I, I think whatever was done was quite perfect, and I don't think it can be enhanced. I think one, two, and three, that's it. I don't think we need a part four or any, anything different. Well, yeah, we but, you know, isn't it. it amazing that here we are 30 years later, about this little movie, and we're still talking about it and interested in Back to the Future. I think it's amazing. Yeah, I think for lack of a better word, it is timeless. I mean, it really uh, is, because it really holds up when you watch these things. I mean, there's, there's little kids here, and you see them, they're quoting the lines from the movie, and it's, just, you know, I, I yeah. was talking to Bob Gale, I said it was the strangest thing, is that you see all these cosplayers now, yeah. all dressed as Marty McFly, and I'm like, that was my... I, that was my wardrobe back in the day. That's like I actually wore that. Now there's cosplayers doing it. I'm like this is wrong. Yeah. This is this is like really old. Um, part three, you got to make a western. Yep. Um, now was that your? I thought it was interesting because wasn't your father a rancher? My, Where did I get you that? Mean Mr. Strickland's father. Your your James Tolkien's. Oh yeah, my yeah my father was in the horse business and later in the cow business, okay. and my grandfather was in the horse business, and I was brought up in the horse business and cow business. And you get to do a Western. Well, how and cool I, was I, that? I, it was pretty cool. I liked it. Okay. Yeah. Now, we'll talk a little bit, because there's a very, if you get to watch the DVD, you know, the DVD extras, the Blu-ray extras, a much meatier role for you in part three is Marshall Strickland, but there's a scene that, we, that isn't in the movie, but it is in the deleted scenes. And spoiler alert, you, you get shot and killed. <laughs> so talk about filming that scene, the fact that it didn't make it in, and I th there are reasons why. It well, I, again, I, they let me improvise at the end. And, I, and when I said, when I turned, I said, remember that word, son, discipline. And I died. I put that in that movie. And they wow. didn't, I guess, accept it right away, but eventually it got put in the... Uh, what, what did you get put in? It's on the DVD, actually. On the, the DVD, deleted yeah. scenes, yeah. Because okay. I think we're going right into the, the sort of squaring off with Buford, and they kind of wanted that energy, and all of a sudden to have a death scene, it was like, I mean, it's really heavy. I mean, it's, have any, has anybody seen it? Raise your hand. Part a few three. people have seen it, yeah. If you Part get a chance, three. check it yeah. out on the, on the deleted scenes. It's really powerful, but it's, the tone is so different <laughs> than the rest of the movie because it's really dark. Yeah, yeah you're, you're killed in front of your son. And yeah. But that, that's, that's where the discipline comes in. So yeah. What was it like to shoot a Western? And when you think about some of the, the, the character actors from the old Westerns that were in it ah. that they brought in, yeah. that had to be just amazing, just from a, like a Hollywood history perspective. It was, and of course, but, and, but when, we, when we did Back to the Future Part Two, I was filming Dick Tracy during the day, and then they, at the end of the day, they would pick me up, drive me to the set of Back to the Future, <sighs> and I would shoot all night. So I was shooting both those movies at the same time, and um, that, there was a tremendous number of character actors <laughs> in both of those, both of those movies. You were numbers in uh, Dick Tracy. Dick numbers. So you yeah. pulled a Michael J. Fox. He was doing Family Ties and Back to the. You pulled a Michael J. <laughs> they well, just drag you to the set and give you two hours. In my, sleep. In my own way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, what was it? What was it like to shoot the western then, with all these great Hollywood actors well, that are coming in was, and you're, you're getting it, it, to play it, it, western? Well, it was terrific. But you know, this was part three. When we did part one, all the actors we had tiny little cubicles to you know for our makeup, and in part three great big trailers and all these big feasts and I mean it was <laughs> such a different scene you know and um, we were filming in Sonora California which is the gold country and um, it, it was just a nice experience do you have a favorite of the three films I like part two because it's so crazy I mean <laughs> when I'm there with the shotgun and eat lead slackers and all that <laughs> I mean that was fun you know yeah <laughs> You have a question? Another question out in the audience? Right here. Oh, you got another? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Remington still here in about three seconds because that's one of my favorites. I got a third. Yep. Frank Langella has gone on record as saying his favorite movie is Masters of the Universe because he just got to chew the scenery as Skeletor and just go nuts. What are your thoughts on that film? Did you enjoy it anywhere near as much as he did? 
For some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a diffused uh, sound. Uh, Frank Langella as Skeletor oh, oh, and loved yeah, it. He said that is his favorite movie because he got to be such a gigantic ham and he enjoyed himself so thoroughly. Are you okay with the flick? Did you enjoy yourself <laughs> nearly as much as he did? Oh, that was, that was a really, really fun thing to do. What, what's it, what's Masters it? Masters of the Universe. Masters of the Universe. You know, it, it was a time, when you look at it now, all the special effects were kind of... You know they're 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 antique now yeah. compared to what, but still for at the time it was pretty good, yeah. and I just had a lot of fun doing that movie. It was just crazy. I again a crazy character, Lubick. I mean, I I played Lubick, where this thought process was from the from the from the from the rear part of his brain, not the front. Do you know what I mean? So that that was that was a very that was a character choice that I made, that made him. I think it, you know, it gave it character. Is anyone allowed to take pot shots at Lubick? No, nobody <laughs> takes pot shots at Lubick. That's right. <laughs> Talk about shooting some of those scenes because you have the the battle where you're. I mean, there's a lot of pyrotechnics. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this one car. I mean, I'm not, I'm sure you're not anywhere near. But my goodness, this one car just like explodes behind your head. <laughs> yeah. And and on, talk about that. And then I also want any film that has Billy Barty. I'm in. I am 100% in. So talk about working with the great Billy Barty as well. Yes, okay. Yeah, well, I, it was just, as I say, it was kind of insane. You know what it was like? It was like, it was like being in a time capsule and it like you just, you don't know where you're going and it's just kind of going through space in this crazy way, you know? And that's, that's how I approached it as an actor, that it was just this, this fantasy, you know? What was Billy like on the set? Because he's covered in makeup. He's I mean, covered, he's, well, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, you know, he was covered in makeup, and he just played the character. He didn't fool around much. Yeah. Yeah. No, anything with him, I'd see foul play or anything like that. Yeah. We talk about, like, the magnitude of that film, too. Because, I mean, I think at the time they talked about it was supposed to be, like, the Star Wars of the 80s, which <laughs> there was a Star Wars of the 80s. I don't know why they called that. But um, I, I know that on some level the box office was disappointing, but it seemed like everybody involved in that movie gave it 110%. Oh yeah, and it's it's a cult movie. A lot of people love that movie. Yeah. What's your favorite? I mean, do you have a favorite part of it? Cuz I mean, you're running again, you're running around with a shotgun a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of And then you get the costume at the end. Yeah, well, I like the very end when I'm sitting there at another planet, I'm dressed like Nero or something <laughs> and and I get and I'm just going to stay there and I'm surrounded by a couple of pretty girls. That was my favorite part. Lubick's, he, Lubick's sitting pretty in that movie. I did not blame you for that opinion in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> Had they talked about a sequel to that? Any, not I mean, that even at the time? Oh, I think there have. There has been talk, but no, okay. nothing specific. Now, I, one thing I want to ask you about is one of my favorite television shows, and you kind of came in on the back end of it, yeah. was Remington Steele yeah. as Norman Keith. I love this character. I want to know about the challenges of the time period that you came into this, because this is right after Pierce Brosnan lost Bond. But he was still with it. He was, st it was still with it. So kind of discuss that because they brought Remington still back and it was because they brought it back that he couldn't do Bond. And uh -huh. what was he like at that point? Was he kind of okay to work with? Or was oh, he just he was like- always very- Okay, like, I didn't know if he was Very, very <laughs> easy to work with. Excellent to work with. In fact, that Remington Steel was the favorite thing that I did in California. I loved the character, I loved all the people, I loved the way it was done, it was so professional. Every scene, they just, they set it up, they shot it, one, two, three, next, was, was extremely well done. And as I say, I liked, I liked that character very much. What did you bring to that character? When they, when you were first cast and they described what he'd be doing and how he's sort of the, the adversary of Remington Steele coming in, how did you bring, what did you bring to that and what were your conversations with Pierce Brosnan in working that character, that dynamic. No, out. there were no conversations with anybody. <laughs> uh, they just brought me in and I made the choices of what to do. And the, the, the writing was so good that I, I did make some choices, uh, personal choices, and as I say, it's, I, really, I really like doing that character. There was a lot of action too, wasn't it? I mean, what, some action, oh yeah. How many, you talk about stunts, especially Masters of the Universe, because yeah. there's a lot going on. How much of your stunt work do you do? How much do you rely on? Stunt well, I've, I've, I've done pretty much all the stunt, stunt work. Um, I, 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 I probably shouldn't do that because when I do, I'm putting a stuntman out of business. But uh, I always, I, I enjoy the challenge. Um, and you know, I've, yeah, I, 
I like I like doing it. Any mishaps on Masters of the Universe? Because uh-uh. there's a lot going on with that. No, film. no, no, no mishaps. No, everything no, was all no. the pyrotechnics were timed out pretty well. Yeah. Do we have any more questions in the audience? Well, yeah, we I talk. Do. Yeah, oh. we talk about. Yeah. Um, go ahead, right, right here with the hat. You you played a lot of great roles, but were there any that you didn't get that you would have liked to have had? Any roles that I didn't get that I'd like to have had? Oh, I'm sure there are, but I'm trying to, th- I, I, I'm sure there are, but I can't really think of any at the moment, roles that I would like to have gotten. No, I, I, it, I, I, in a way, you know, I think once I do an audition, if nothing happens, I just kind of forget about it, <laughs> you know, and I just go on. There's kind of a theme that I sense here too, in that a lot. Of, I I don't see you auditioning for a ton of stuff. It seems like a lot of a lot of casting agents wanted you and wanted that character and wanted what you bring to yeah. it. Do you find that a lot? Often, and, often, yeah. yes. What What are those meetings like when you go in with these people and what do they say? Like, give me this guy, <laughs> give me this intensity, or like how how are they explaining the characters? Because there are similar themes. They're very authoritarian figures. Uh, in your face, mm. literally in your face, characters like yeah. within millimeters. Yeah, but you know, when, when especially in movies, they kind of hire you. They know what you're going to bring, and they trust you. And there's not too much discussion. They want to see what you bring. It's if you're working with Sidley Lumet, he guides you specifically. But so often uh, in California and Hollywood, they uh, they they bring you in, they hire you, and they. Okay, kid, do your thing, you know. What are these Back to the Future events like that you're doing now? Because we're obviously in the 30th anniversary. We're in the future. It is 2015. We yeah. finally arrived. We don't have flying cars yet, well, unfortunately. But what, you're doing a lot of these events. Claudia is doing a lot of these events. Yeah. What What do you get out of these when you go and you see the fans and even these? Like, well, kids? you know what? I, I I'm always amazed that there are so many people who appreciate some of the work I've done and some of the work we've all done in the movies. Uh, we did. We had a huge show in London recently. I, last week I was in San Antonio where a lot of people were lovely. Here I'm meeting a lot of nice people. And um, it's, uh, I appreciate the fact that some people make it, make me feel rewarded that it had some meaning for them, that I brought some enjoyment or entertainment or something to, um, to 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 the to the to the people, and there are I'm, I'm always amazed there are thousands and thousands of people. <laughs> you know, I get fan mail from all over the world, Japan, Germany, everywhere, and it's from these movies. And I worked for more than 30 years in the theater in New York, and I've done some very good th- work. But some people might remember it, but I don't know who. But you do these movies. And they they're around forever, and uh, it's 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 very nice. Well, they become part of the pop culture too. And you when you mentioned London, that was a yeah. huge thing because you got I mean there was Michael J. Fox, Christopher oh, yeah. Lloyd, Leah yeah. Thompson. Yeah. What was that meeting like when you got to when you all got together? Because <laughs> it looked like you guys were having a lot of fun. Well, in we London. did have a lot of fun, and it was very special because, as you know, Michael J. Fox is not all that well, but he was there and he was he did well and. We uh, we just had a had a very uh, worthwhile time. Did you get in his face at all? Well, I talked to him, of course. Of did course, you get I to him. <laughs> a picture right up in his face? No, he directed me, you know, in a, in a Tales from the Crypt that he directed. That's right. They, it, was, it was great. That's right. Well, what was it like taking direction from Michael J. Fox? He What's was he great. Like as a director? He was just terrific. And, uh, I mean, it was so easy to work with because we knew each other and we trusted each other. And he just he just let me go, <laughs> and, he, and he appreciated what I did. I remember. Is he sort of like fall on the side, the man, sort of manic Bob Zemeckis side? Well, I wouldn't say manic, no, um, but very smart. Very intelligent. Very yeah, smart. Right. Well, fans are probably going to want to know. You mentioned the the western with Kurt Russell. Fans, yeah. are, we've yeah. got another panel that's going to be coming in a few minutes, but I oh. uh, want to find out what you're up to right now. And how can we find out more about you? You're obviously going to be doing some Back to the Future things. Well, I think, I think uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a few of these. But uh, I, what I'm about now is um, as soon as I finish this, I live up in Lake Placid, New York. I have a beautiful place and a beautiful wife. 
and I play a lot of golf, and I'm anxious <laughs> to get home before the snow falls and get back on the golf course and uh, just just enjoy life. That's what I've been doing. And I give thanks every day for all that I have, and I have just about everything I ever wanted, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And a lot of it has to do with all of you. Well, we're, we're very thankful that you've joined us today. I think I'm gonna say, what do you say we give it to the, the guy that brought up the uh, Back to the Future question right Absolutely. Over here? Yeah. Yep, right in the there you go. You, gotta you, tell, you started us off with Strickland, so you'll get that. So, James, thank you so much for joining us today. James is going to be signing autographs. You're going to be here all weekend. Oh, for And you've got the Back thank to the Future you. panel. Thank you so yep. Much. Thank you very much, James. Hey. Good job, guys.